Web3, you know, like, sure, you, you can put a TV on, on your nose. The internet was a read-only, and then there's additional layers that we place on. It became much more interactive. Web3 represents kind of a new philosophy about how to realize these technologies in a more distributed and democratic way. Over the years, crypto has generated a lot of new terms. Web3, a concept used to represent a decentralized version of the internet that will run entirely on blockchains and cryptocurrency technology, is one of the most recent to gain momentum. While blockchains like Bitcoin and Ethereum were once the most popular means of exchanging value over the internet, the vision of Web3 held by crypto enthusiasts has begun to materialize in recent years. Hello and welcome to Floris Online. In today's video, we'll go through the basics of Web3 and the growing token economy that it supports. We will also differentiate between Web3 and the metaverse. But before we begin, be sure to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss an update on the latest NFT and crypto news. Let's delve into a little history. Brenners Lee designed Web 1.0 in the beginning. Back in 1989, the World Wide Web was considered to be read only. People went online to seek for, buy, and consume products and services, but there was no way to interact with each other or add to the content. Then in 2004 emerged Web 2.0, which focused on people's capacity to cooperate and share knowledge online. This period is also known as the social media era. Large firms like Facebook, Google, and Amazon have a major monopoly on how this version of the internet works as a result of this. However, we live in exciting times. The arrival of Web 3.0 The internet is described as decentralized and secure in this era. The internet's operation will no longer be dictated by a small group of people, but rather distributed among consumers. People can exchange information and money online without the necessity of a middleman. There are no firewalls or government rules in place. This version will be based on smart contracts and cryptocurrency. By utilizing the power of blockchain technology, Web3 aims to solve the challenges that Web2 has. Web3 is envisioned as a decentralized form of the internet in which large corporations such as Facebook and Google will no longer hold complete control. The Ethereum blockchain has credible neutrality, which means it is permissionless, trustless, and has no central authority. Authority. To put it another way, you don't have to ask or trust anyone to use it, and the network isn't controlled by anyone. Sending Bitcoin directly to another person rather than through an online exchange or a centralized server is a nice example of a Web3 trustless transaction. The blockchain algorithm and encryption manage the entire transaction process, and there is almost no chance that anyone can intervene or disrupt it. Similarly, Permissionless implies that neither side in a transaction or interaction needs to obtain permission from a third party, such as a service provider or a government, before proceeding. By the way, you're not alone if you believe all this talk about avoiding government interference sounds a bit anarchist or libertarian. There are still a lot of unanswered questions about the safety and potential repercussions of this lack of oversight or management. Governments have already attempted to enact legislations that will allow them to maintain some control over communications and interactions on Web3. In Web3, the data that makes up the internet would be stored on a network rather than on servers as it is now. Any changes or movement of that data would be recorded on the blockchain, creating a record that the entire network would verify. This in theory keeps bad people from exploiting data while also keeping track of where it goes. In the same way that Bitcoin blockchains are designed to prevent double spending, a blockchain-centric internet would theoretically make data manipulation and control more difficult. Because data would be decentralized, no gatekeeper would be able to control it, preventing anyone from accessing the internet. On paper, this would allow considerably more people to use the internet than before, and AI would be used to combat bots and click farming websites. A peer-to-peer -peer payment app based on a blockchain is an example of a Web3 application. People could pay for goods and services using a decentralized app, designed for payments instead of going to a bank. Before a transaction can be completed, it must first be confirmed by the network and then written into the blockchain's digital ledger. People who can't open bank accounts, don't have access to them, or are prevented from offering certain services by large payment providers may benefit from such a system. While cryptocurrency began as a means of exchanging decentralized currencies over the internet, Ethereum has evolved into the hub of the new ecosystem. So far, 
Crypto has built decentralized finance, which uses the blockchain to imitate some traditional finance activities like lending and borrowing. Decentralized finance, or DeFi, is already transforming finance and establishing a more open, inclusive economy free of old gatekeepers. Now, how does the metaverse fit in with Web3? Web3 is frequently confused with the metaverse. The metaverse is the name for a network of virtual worlds that allow users to create their own identities, interact with others, and play with them over the internet. Many people predict that the metaverse will eventually replace today's social networks and will become more intertwined with our lives than the real world. Crypto is a major element of the metaverse since it allows users to earn money through activities like play to earn games. Crypto is basically the money of the metaverse. NFTs are also important to the metaverse since they allow users to purchase digital products like fashion accessories and in-game assets. Over the previous year, popular metaverse-focused crypto projects such as Decentraland and Axie Infinity have grown in popularity. The word metaverse refers to the next version of the internet's front end, the user interface through which we interact with the online world, connecting with other users and alter data, and it is used in reference to Web3. In case you missed the hype, the metaverse is intended to be a much more immersive, social, and lasting version of the internet that we all know and love. It will use virtual reality, VR, and augmented reality, AR, technologies to lure us in allowing us to interact with the digital domain in a more natural and immersive way. The metaverse can be viewed as the interface through which people will interact with Web3 tools and apps in numerous ways. Basically, the metaverse will look something like the Ready Player One movie, where you create your own avatar in a virtual world and interact with other players. Just like every new concept, Web3 has faced a lot of criticisms from some high-profile people. Elon Musk has said a lot of negative things about Web3, including one where he said, seems more like a marketing buzzword than a reality right now. He tweeted, has anyone seen Web3? I can't find it. Web3 has also come under fire from people like Jack Dorsey, the former CEO of Twitter and a well-known Bitcoin supporter. This is partially due to venture capital firms like Andreessen Howard's engagement. In 2021, VCs invested $30 billion in crypto and Web3 companies, putting the total amount of money invested in the field at all-time highs. Critics like Dorsey argue that venture capital firms own Web3 and have authority over the space. While many Web3 supporters have criticized his remarks because of the benefits the space provides for everyday people, they aren't entirely untrue. Anderson Horowitz, for example, has a big influence over Uniswap governance decision because it holds such a large portion of Uni tokens. Furthermore, the amount of multi-million dollar attacks in the DeFi area has emphasized the dangers of utilizing Bitcoin technology. Blockchains also contain a public ledger that tracks all transactions, which raises serious privacy concerns for consumers. The problem has yet to be resolved, though solutions may be found in the future. The internet is without a doubt one of the most important inventions the world has ever seen. Web 1 and Web 2 enabled the global spread of information and material, allowing humans to connect communicate and share ideas in ways that had never been possible before. However, if Web3 delivers on its promises, it has potential to be as transformative as the internet itself. Users will gain by exchanging value through tokens rather than exchanging information or content. The internet will not be dominated by a limited number of firms that profit from their users in the world that Web3 enthusiasts envision. Instead, users will form communities and profit from their actions and the value that they generate. While Web3 still is in its infancy, early breakthroughs in the DeFi, NFTs, and DAO spaces demonstrate that there is every reason to hope in decentralization and the vast possibilities that it can open up. Tell me what you think about the Web3 in the comment section. Also, don't forget to subscribe for more news on cryptos and NFTs. Thanks for taking the time to watch and see you in the next video.